I would say synchronistic that she is the first speaker because she's also was my reintroduction into the hybridization program. And we've done, I think it was three different events. And not only is she well researched and like has a really great balance of creativity and linear thinking in order to present what she's going to do, but it's just um, really empowering information too, and just such a sincere person. So I'm extremely excited to have you here, Geraldine. Wow, and what, what, a, what a blessing. Thank you. One Alan, more thing. Sorry. I would just want, no, I just want to say that you work with the DNA. So it's not just a lecture. What we'll have here today is an activation. So everyone watching this will be able to feel into the cellular structures and start to move the kind of frequencies that have taken, that takes the body from one level of consciousness to the next level of consciousness. Because Exactly. And because that's what happened to you. It just, you wouldn't be able to do this unless, but you are initiating other people into this. It's a cellular awakening. And when the cells awaken, the consciousness is transformed. So it, it works both ways. The consciousness can transform the cells and the cells can transform the consciousness. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you said that because that's exactly what this is about and what I'm going to talk about today. Because all the more that we understand what, the holographic DNA is what we are as holographic beings, the more we can understand what we're doing here and our participation in this global intergalactic exchange that we're a part of. So thank you so much, Sheila, Neil and Alan for, for doing hey. such an incredible event. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, really. Oh, you're muted, Alan. Oh, you're up. Go ahead. You're you're on. Take it away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you so much. So I'll just jump right into uh, my presentation. And um, we're going to take a look at uh, some important aspects of kind of like the history of, DN of um, hybridization. I'm going to share my screen here with everyone so that we can jump into this um, together. And let me... Make sure that we're doing this properly. Okay, great. So I'm assuming you can now see my screen. And uh, yes, gonna... your screen is up. Yes. Wonderful. And I'm just going to take us into presentation mode in just a minute. Once I gather my thoughts here. Okay. So when I uh, was asked to speak at this conference, I thought about what was the best way to kind of discuss this topic, because it's a very complex topic. There's many layers to it, and there's so much information that's important about the hybridization program. That one part of it is the information that we have about our genetics and our origins, but another part of it has to do with the experiencer and what they're experiencing as well. And what I what I see in my message when we're talking about the hybridization program is where those things meet, where the human experience is really affecting this intergalactic experience and that exchange, everything from, uh, you know, the human uh, body, the physical aspect, all the way to the multidimensional, interdimensional aspect of the human body. So. I came into this topic of the hybridization program through personal experience by being introduced to my hybrid children in 2013. And it allowed me to understand the process from the inside out. But as soon as that happened to me, I was activated with psychic abilities to see the multidimensional body and began to put together all of the incredibly anonymous events that were happening happening to me throughout my life since the age of five, including contact, missing time, miscarriages, um, strange anomalous pregnancies that were happening to me. And so as a result of that, began to dive deep into the study of this. And I began to not only channel per se, but to see information holographically uh, presented through me through um, hypnotherapy and also further contact experiences up until today, which continue to inform me on how this is happening, why it's happening. And of course, it's a never ending journey of learning. But we're going to go back to the very beginning as what one of the most impactful things that changed my life about my perspective about the hybridization program was understanding the origins of the hybridization program here as they were seated on the planet. And in 2017, when I was regressed and Please understand that before this uh, 2013 experience, I had not researched, studied, or looked into any of this anywhere, uh, much less was able to find this information anywhere. 
Um, and one of the reasons why I speak on the topic is because it's so hard to find, you know, information on this sometimes uh, that really gets into the details. So I was shown that three main bloodlines come in and seed life on this planet. And so one of those bloodlines of the three, one of them was a blue, a red, and a green. And one of the bloodlines, which was a blue bloodline, was shown to me as being a Pleiadian bloodline. And um, what creates the different color of the bloodlines depends on their origin in the sectors of the universe, what part of the universe is they're coming. And of course, those are not by chance. They have very, very deep uh, connections to where they come in on the planet, the history that lies within the within the, the earth grid of the planet, and the information that is left there, and what we see now in ancient history, in petroglyphs, around the entire world, we see the development and advancement of these of, of these bloodlines in many different ways. And of course, uh, this research of looking into these different bloodlines allowed me to understand the original composition of our own DNA here on Earth. The second bloodline was a reptilian bloodline. It was a, a red, a, a green bloodline. And the third bloodline was shown to me as a, as a red bloodline, which not only manages and creates and designs matrices or the structures of our reality, but they're the information that most resembles the core essence of this galactic space and utilizing the minerals and the information, the data of the Earth grid in this galactic uh, realm, in this immediate um, uh, galaxy, we are utilizing the information in order to create the blood type and how the organism is developed and created. So even the kind of blood that is created depends on the, the, the planetary system, the sun, the color of the sun, which depends on the energy that, that the sun is emitting. And all of the information from the center core of the sun kind of radiates from the center out into all of the planetary systems, defining how those uh, minerals and how the substance and chemical reactions responses will uh, define the human body, how they will manifest in the human body. And this includes our blood, of course. The color of our blood is not just by chance a color, but our human blood is a result of the kind of metals and how the oxygen is being moved through the body. So this is very interesting when we start to look at this three main bloodlines, because these original bloodlines that were seeding life on this planet are the ones that created the entire human race, genetically modified from those origins to create the human race. And the kind of bloodline that is more prevalent in different parts of the world define how these bloodlines have evolved historically. The origin, this is, this is a, a picture of how uh, the evolution of mitochondrial DNA has moved through the world. The origin is here in Mesopotamia, and of course, which I speak in many other uh, presentations about more in depth, you know, why we believe that that's the origin, how we believe that that's the origin. And of course, it's the origin from a certain timeline that we are accessing now. I do believe that we have even older, older races um, that originate in that in this uh, Indo-European sector as well. Um, but there are layers and layers of information on the planet Earth that have kind of uh, civilizations seem to have reached a certain peak point in their technological advancement in their understanding of of their creation and then seem to go through a kind of cyclical pattern where now it comes back to zero it goes up again creating civilization and it goes back down to zero almost as if these civilizations are being restarted each time but the interesting thing about that is that we can look at the genetic code for our immediate world history starting in Mesopotamia and looking at how these bloodlines have kind of evolved and traced through history beginning in Mesopotamia and and uh, 
developing and spreading around the world. This is a graph of how, uh, by blood type, the different uh, sectors of the world that contain the majority of these blood types. And this is very important because it plays a role in our understanding. And, and if you overlap that with that mitochondrial uh, lineage, you can begin to notice that how these bloodlines have developed and expressed themselves around the earth. One of the interesting bloodlines that it keeps coming up in my research over and over again and working with hundreds of contactees is that there are unique bloodlines that seem to be more pertinent uh, and relevant when it comes to contactee experiencers. And so that really made me kind of research the original origin of how these blood types were developed and how they are distributed amongst our planet Earth. If you look at how these genes have passed through um, the different races, um, it is really truly in incredible how you see the patterns here of, of these genes. And these genes really help us understand um, not just the structures of belief that were implemented in there, but they help us understand when certain belief systems were inserted into the historical timeline. Everything from religion, culture, uh, all the way to going into to um, the industrial age and so on and so forth, all of that is kind of depicted in the programming that we see in the world. Now, when I came across research that ICAR had done regarding blood types, I was incredibly amazed at how similar it was to the information that I was receiving from research that I was doing with my contactees in my support group. And they discovered that um, the majority of their contactees that they were uh, surveying came out to uh, about 30% of them were negative zero blood type. And it really made me uh, wonder if we overlap these numbers over the places in the in the earth, just like the map I was showing you, what will that tell us about contact information? What will that tell us about who's having more contact and why they're having it? Um, is it really that that RH negative means that you're more prone to contactees or to being part of the hybridization program? Well, in this small group of 500 contactees, I, I ran the same survey and found out that 30% of them have that RH negative factor. But the second largest group was uh, um, negative AB, was AB. And so it was very interesting um, that that this is something that tells us about this experiences. And I think that it really speaks to something more than just saying that, you know, RH negative people are being abducted more or, or remember those experiences. What is the RH negative? The RH negative originates in the Basque region. This is where my ancestors come. My bloodline originates here in this Basque region. Um, and what's interesting about the Basque is that the language that they speak is so isolated that it's not related to any other of the languages that we see on Earth, which is very interesting. And the way I discovered the Basque connection to myself was actually through the speak speaking light language, speaking the dialects and words that I found in this Basque language. Um, through my own near-death experience in 2018, I began to speak this light language. And it really incredibly changed the way that I began to look at language because you understand that there's something more to language. Um, we also don't know when the RH negative came about, that type in the historical record. Um, and so found that very interesting. Now, who discovered this blood type and organized the blood types into types was um, a biologist named Carl Landsteiner. And he actually, in the 1939, is the one that discovered that RH negative. And in 1922, uh, was working for the Rockefeller Center um, in order to begin further research of that. Um, what was interesting about the research about this, and, and the reason why I, I researched him, is because 
in my uh, download of information, one of the things that I saw was that there was a very important element regarding the connection with some of these organizations through history that are preserving certain bloodlines. And this is something that we have since the origin of life in Mesopotamia. Certain bloodlines were being heavily preserved in order for their information and for families to be kept, uh, quote unquote, pure in the form of their information. And the Rh negative blood type historically has a very interesting uh, perception. One of the things that I found was that um, Hitler actually was quite against the Rh negative, um, and he he wrote that he wanted to eliminate all those that had that Rh negative, thinking that they were an inferior. Uh, bloodline. And this is very interesting to me because when I looked at Hitler's original bloodline, he actually had one of, one of, he was one of the strongest essences of this blue Pleiadian and reptilian combination bloodline in history. And it's very much in alignment with this kind of combination that is very typical of these preserved bloodlines that are in places of power that are managing the royal, the royal, um, uh, house, house in, in England, and going all the way down to these uh, ancient Egyptians, going all the way down to uh, uh, the U.S. and the presidential lineage, uh, these, these specific bloodlines that are related are traced back to original bloodlines that are heavily preserved in history. So it's interesting that in history we actually have that. Now in the Human Genome Project what they discovered was that out of uh, ten, you know, hundreds of thousands of genes which they expected to find uh, many different proteins that 100,000 genes in the human DNA, but in fact, what they found was that only 30,000 genes were in human DNA, and that only 300 are more than, than a, a dolphin, for example. And so our relationship to other organisms, living organisms on this planet, are not very far off. In fact, we all contain the same base DNA, all organisms, okay? And so when we think of ET contact in the hybridization program, what we're now understanding by just by understanding that one piece about how we are all having the same base is that DNA is more than just this uh, information that creates the structure of the human body. And how it creates the structure of the human body is also a very important part in understanding our interdimensional aspects of ourselves. Peter Garayev, which is a researcher from Russia, is one that really pushed and, and pushed the research around what junk DNA is, um, discovering that it's not really runoff and leftover uh, of evolution at all. It's not just extra information that was categorized as junk DNA. In fact, he, he saw that there was a basic syntax and a ling linguistic nature to DNA, which means that literally you can form words and sentences and vice versa to read and understand what this genetic code is. And it's very important to the creation of a human structure. It's very important to the information that's running through our uh, system. So Garayev's team utilized the DNA codon sequencing using a modulated laser light to reprogram the DNA. And they discovered that this grammatical syntax of the DNA language that they were able to modulate coherent laser light and even radio waves by adding semantics, meaning, in other words, to the carrier wave. Thus, they were able to reprogram in vivo DNA in living organisms by using the correct resonance frequencies of DNA. The most impressive discovery he made so far is that spoken language can be modulated to change that carrier with the same reprogramming effect. And so this is one of the most powerful things that when we think about DNA as this kind of syntax, this language, that if you were to compare it with, with language, we are, language is a vibrational frequency. It's a resonance that when 
The words that you speak are put together. They create vibrational frequency that affects organisms. And this is exactly the way that DNA is functioning in its writing of its information. And we understand this now through epigenetics, of course, how our environment plays a tremendous role in the information that we are holding in our system. And even though it takes time for that evolutionary process to uh, build in the body, every cell is rewriting itself in cyclical patterns. Now, if we look at the history of language, it it Potentially, our language could have oris originated as a result of our understanding to how DNA is being written. The origins of language are also following along the lines of the same map that I showed you earlier about blood types and how DNA is evolving from Mesopotamia through history, through the earth. And these ancient languages are very interesting because they are patterns of frequency. Now, uh, just to add a note about uh, uh, the hybrid, the hybrid aspect of this, of course, that many hybrids begin to channel light language when they become aware of their starseed roots. And this was the case with myself in a very organic manner, where, uh, where uh, as a result of these Im uh, impactful experiences, like the near-death experience, I immediately began to channel this light, strange language that I myself didn't understand what it was. I had no idea what light language was, and I began to record myself one day. And I found uh, a friend of mine named James Newman who translates light language. And I sent him over the recording, and he was able to uh, translate information, communication that was coming down from my grandmother that had just passed away about important information about our family that we actually needed at that time to carry some family business out. So it was just blew my mind that this information is coming in vibrationally through each hybrid. Each hybrid is tapping in to the information that is in this genetic code. And it's dormant, perhaps, up until a certain point. But when it becomes activated, we begin to express that. Now, what we what scientists call junk DNA or dark DNA, which is the DNA which they believe isn't actually constructing anything or directly connected by what they can see to the functionality of the human organism, is in fact where the majority of our most important information lies. This is the key to understanding that we are interdimensional, that we are intergalactic, and that that information that we store within the body is so massive. In fact, um, the other, the 90% of our gene is non, is uh, non-creative. It's not functioning. It doesn't write the functions. It's non-coding. In other words, it doesn't write what a certain organ is going to do or a certain cell is going to do. Um, genes make up 1% to 2% of our DNA, protein-making DNA. 80%, oh, I'm so sorry, I accidentally moved this. 80% um, of the human genome is functional in some encoding. Okay, so the majority of our DNA actually is not writing this functional code to make something move or to bring blood cells somewhere in the body. So there is a much larger function to the human body that is non-physical. Now, DNA projects a blueprint of an organism. It is holographic. And the way I learned about this is through my hypnotherapy, um, through the channeling of looking at the structure, the multidimensional structure, first physically through my activated psychic abilities, but then also I began to realize that when a person went through certain changes in their life, they expressed different information in their multidimensional body, and I could see that. But going deeper into that, I realized that the mechanism lies in the DNA, in the genetic code. Something is being activated or deactivated. And so what DNA actually functions as is this incredible blueprint of the organism that is translated into this incredible creation where it, it is literally like a biocomputer that is creating these genetic codes to form pre-images. So we are more fundamentally this electromagnetic system of creation rather than just chemical. Of course, all of those play an important role. Now, we go deeper into the understanding when we look at a cell down to the cellular molecular level, it is oscillating. And I was able to find this beautiful, incredible images of this 
oscillating DNA that creates a toroidal field. The way it was shown to me is that we are in self-similar spherical structures of information from the ma micro to the macro, and we are an expression of that. And not only that, but the different kinds of strands of DNA form different vibrational frequencies. And how I was shown this is that each person that emits a certain vibrational signature, actually the information is coming from their DNA. When I look at somebody's body, you can actually see that expression come out energetically, vibrationally in their body. So this is very important to us because we begin to understand now what these hybrids are storing, what makes the human so important and plays a role in the, in the hybridization program. My number one question as, as a result of my abduction experience was, why us? Why me? Am I something special? And in fact, we are all part of this. If we look at how DNA is structured and stores information, in one teaspoon of DNA, we can store the entire world's history. So can you imagine how much information you are storing within your body? In fact, this, this is actually now becoming the future technologically. We have so many different companies popping up here in the Silicon Valley that are mimicking the process of storage of information in the genetic code in order to store massive amounts of information. So I think that we are just one step away from understanding that that dark DNA is actually the key to understanding our galactic connection. Now, how the soul embodies into this physical body, the soul attaches to these two systems, one which is our DNA ancestral lineage, which speaks to our information that comes down from our maternal and paternal lineage. But all that information is organized in a beautifully complex system, which is the chakra system, which is connected to the endocrine system. You know, all the systems that run the organisms in the body are being informed by the information within the DNA, which is informed by the soul essence that communicates with that information. And so we go deeper into understanding that, um, you know, what's next? And, and this is what I see for the future, that in the same way that we are utilizing DNA to store information, it also tells us key information about the organisms. Maybe in the future, we will have something that defines who is a hybrid and what kind of hybrid you are. But you know, I feel that DNA is kind of the next step. We're kind of leading in that way, maybe DNA passports. And I think we see this in our in our near future. How DNA uh, run information runs in the family is very complex and incredibly important to understand when we're talking about the hybridization program. Because the hybridization program runs in families. Usually the person that has contact, it's their mother is having it, their father is having it. It runs in the family. In my family, the most impactful thing that we discovered was that all of my family, all the women in my family had had contact experience in one way or another. And particularly with uh, my cousins and uh, certain aunts, my aunt was actually on the craft in 2013 when I was consciously abducted. And later on to find out that she had also been experiencing these strange miscarriages, strange experiences. So what it tells us about, uh, you know, the hybridization is that because of the type, and it's very important to see the correlation between the blood types that run in the family, you know, the different blood types don't necessarily tell you what the child is going to have. And I don't believe that that's a random selection. I believe that if you look at the generational pattern, looking back at ancestral lineages from generations before, you're going to begin to see a pattern and when these blood types present themselves and how the contact presents itself in that lineage. Um, so another aspect that's really interesting about this DNA and hybrids is that working with hundreds of, of parents, um, something that started to creep up in the research is that a lot of uh, um, children that are diagnosed with autism or to be as part of the spectrum also are presenting certain unique blood types and are also presenting certain uh, information regarding their connections at such an early age. 
um, there are some children that I have been working with that really, truly, they remember everything. And of course, we, we look at Mary Rodwell's work, who will be speaking this weekend. She studies this a lot of how um, children are literally embodying all of the memory. They have it very readily available for them. And there is a profound connection between that, between these kinds of diagnoses that we make and also our genetic lineage, our blood type, and contact experience. These are the children of the future, and they are so incredibly valuable and important to our future that I strongly believe that these children that are coming in from the spectrum are the leaders that can pull our generation forward, in fact. They are not here to function in the same way um, that we are made to function for the reason to break that system, to break that pattern that we have created, you know, uh, historically. So many there are other different kinds of uh, hybrids that are incarnating of course in other words those are hybrids another form of hybrids are the interdimensional hybrids as well and these interdimensional hybrids are usually on craft or in other um, uh, groups uh, these intergalactic groups that are communicating and, ex and exchanging with their origin and group family um, according to the paper roll uh, that was conducted um, in 1991, um, 3.7 million Americans have stated that they were abducted. And um, from that percentage, I believe it's 30% of those that believe that they have been a part of the hybridization program, which really tells us that this conscious or the memory of that contact experience is very fresh in them. It's, it's very prevalent. And the blood types do play a role in that. Um, now, there are many different kinds of uh, programs, and one of the programs that uh, we're looking at here is that why? Why are they breeding with us, these extraterrestrials? Is it because they cannot breed biologically, um, and they are creating these clonings, genetically modified beings? But in my opinion, and through my experience and what I have understood, um, and not, not just understood, but seen is that these, these um, hybrids are holding an essence, an essence within them that is different, and it is that soul, that life force energy that runs through their organism. The genetic modification has more to do with that soul essence and the complexity of the multidimensional body and holographic DNA than it has to do with just the survival of any particular race. And I believe that we are moving evolutionary just the way the cells create new cells and in our society we are creating new life in order to continue the race this is a natural expression of evolution collectively and some of these programs let's we can call them programs i don't really like to use that word but let's say some of these uh, groups and the intention of some of these groups are indeed more parasitic in nature because the exchange is not a balanced exchange and some of them tend to be very high vibrational as well although i often tend to question um you know if any exchange at all is occurring between these consciousness you know isn't it all parasitic where does the free will of each individual organism lie? And this is where we go deeper into these kinds of topics. But we can begin to understand what happens to the human body when it goes through the hybridization program. What's being hybridized is not just the human physical body or the form. It is the information, the intergalactic information that is available in all dimensional planes of the organism. Our human bodies are not just physical we actually exist in all of the planes going up to the 13th dimension. And that means that we have access to the information in all these dimensional planes. When we are hybridized, the information that is more present, more um, uh, available in that genetic code is what will define its blood type, it's what will define the food that it's eating, the way that it feels, the emotions that it usually runs, the programs, any kind of cyclical ancestral program that an organism, human, is running through their system is usually cyclical within a bloodline that defines its ancestral lineage. And these systems, these complex systems of information are what allow access to these different dimensional planes. Each one of these dimensional planes is 
a different kind of uh, intergalactic uh, being per se, or they are the key to understanding the levels of consciousness and how they manifest in uh, extraterrestrial or interdimensional form. When we look at the multidimensional body, we literally look like this. We are a network of information. And the soul, through experiences, through traumatic experiences, becomes fragmented. So we have fragments of ourselves which we perceive uh, through the, the illusion of a linear timeline, uh, past and future. But in fact, we are experiencing all of these dimensional timelines simultaneously. So we have access to, uh, through our genetic code and through the activation of genetic code, ET contact, our starseed origins, our past lives, um, our mother's lineage and her experiences, and maybe the reincarnation of that same, uh, somebody that, that is your mom now was perhaps your sister in another lifetime. We seem to be running through these ancestral lineages and information. And this is actually the core it's, it's like the Akashic record. We are embedded in that main DNA. And actually, this information is stored within the Akashic record. The Akashic record functions as the holographic DNA system for this galaxy, this Earth, this system that we're in right now. But of course, if you go to other systems, they have other storage systems, uh, other, other cells, other data that is stored within them as well. So the human creates a fragmentation of the soul. How does that happen? And this is incredibly important to understand. The more fragmentation that we have in this three-dimensional plane, the more we are interlaced and connected to all of its fragments. The children that we bring into the world hold a fractal of ourselves within them. We are all these self-similar uh, organisms. But we also become fragmented to trauma, which means that our soul, through the, uh, you know, the feeling of being helpless or the feeling of being uh, disconnected to source, it becomes split. And that occurs through the manipulation of the first three chakras, the unconscious utilization of the first three chakras. Everything that is above the heart, the throat, the third eye, going up into the 13th dimension is the access to the multidimensional, higher dimensional realms where we begin to access uh, other consciousness like angelic consciousness, ET consciousness, all of these aspects of ourselves. What makes the difference, um, uh, well, uh, let me just finish this thought about the soul, uh, when we when we give birth to a child they have they have an aspect of our soul and this is the important essence the soul which it, which the holographic dna is basically a holographic projection of a soul it is the data bank of that soul and all that information now let's talk about uh, briefly how does this uh, hybridization program occur it occurs through these uh different uh parts and and people uh, experiencers will recall their experience at any one of these different um, uh, aspects of the de of the hybridization program. First begins implantation, and this is when implantation occurs at the age of five or in their early ages, usually, where uh, a sample of their genetic code is utilized to create implants that are then reinserted in the organism that are either used to monitor or to uh, produce uh, communication information with the organism and its origin of the program. The second part of it is the insemination, and usually this happens when the child is uh, already grown, developed into a young adult and is ready to be able to incubate. Thirdly, the incubation process takes up to usually three months um, when they are non-physical or when they are removed out of the incubation in the body, the gestation process. And our, our hybrids that are born here are, er, on Earth are carried out to full term, and that is a different kind of a program. When the, the fourth part of it is the removal of the fetus, and then they are incubated further in incubation tanks. And I am incredibly continuously uh, surprised that after speaking to hundreds of men and women, they have seen every single part of these, of, of these um, aspects, these stages of the hybridization program. 
uh, four, you know, finally, the, the physical hybrids are then potentially reinserted within the timeline. So those are the hybrids that we see here, our children. Now, the way that insemination is done, they have different kinds of techniques. Sometimes 3D holographic imagery is pulled uh, from the contactee subconscious mind and utilized for uh, the union and the insemination process. Uh, sometimes interdimensional portals are created and they are shifting reality and moving, uh, teleporting an organism into an environment where this insemination will take. In other words, missing time. Uh, and usually reinserted back into the timeline again, already inseminated. The physical extractions from the contactees are usually removed out of the body. And another way, and that's they have definite visible and psychological uh, side effects to the extraction process for the majority of the women that recall their experience. Finally, the astral plane is also another dimensional plane in which the hybridization is occurring. I originally thought that it was only in the physical, but it's actually occurring in the astral plane. And this is why it's important to understand how our other dimensional planes play a role in the hybridization program. Now, insemination can, can occur through inter, uh, interuterine. It can occur uh, in mechanical through through injection, for example, or robotic mechanical insemination. It can also be biomechanical with artificial intelligence or a human that is there that is created for this purpose. Um, it can be psychological or uh, non-physical through screen. And also it can be done physically through the process of intercourse. Now, you may ask, why, why does this happen? The way that the insemination happens is incredibly important in the design of the organism that is created and it will define the kind of vibrational essence the soul the type of soul the mission per se or the journey that this soul is going to carry out because at the time of inception there is an imprint of an expression it is a vibrational imprint through that process most of the the hybridization program that is carried out from parasitic programs are done through the destruction of um, the seemingly destruction of the of the mother or the carrier and usually it's uh, it's an unpleasant experience a very traumatic experience and it's traumatic because it's imprinting in that zygote in that uh, fetus what will occur and and its expression which tells us about the dualistic expressions Programs that are more high vibration are usually done in a more loving environment. They are more, uh, you know, beautiful experiences. Their uh, uh, contactees express having contact with these beautiful beings, and it's very loving and wonderful experiences. But all of this really plays a role in understanding how DNA imprints information at the time of inception. The the shorter the wavelength, the faster that wavelength is moving at that time, the more of the DNA is activated. The, the lesser and slower that wavelength, that experience occurs, the less DNA is activated. And this is what we experience here on Earth with our, our global hypnosis, where we forget, we forget who we are, what we are at the time of coming into this planet. Um, and all of that can be reversed. Now, this information is passed down through the mitochondrial DNA, as you can see. All this information plays a role in how the organism, whether it's you and I, hybrids that are here, and how we activate our information, or how these holographic beings do. Um, and again, it is part of a much larger system, which we are interconnected to. Now, here is a painting that I did about one of my experiences where the hybrid was being removed and inserted in these tanks. Now, I, I host uh, international support groups, and after speaking with hundreds and hundreds of contactees, I keep hearing the same thing, incubation tanks, incubation tanks, and the way I saw them was walls and walls and walls of these incubation tanks. So potentially each each human, whether it's a man or a woman, is being utilized for a certain number of these. And I think it has to do with 
the lineage with the lineage um, at the bottom I inserted a, a picture of other kinds of hybridization tanks they don't always look like the ones that I saw I, I have reports from contactees that see them in large tubes in beds in tanks in large pooled rooms um, even holographically hovering so we are all seeing it seems these kinds of uh, uh, similar information now, when we talk about the movement removal, this is often the most challenging part of the hybridization program. When we talk about how the fetus is removed from the gestation, oftentimes uh, it does tend to leave um, side effects in the in the woman that can feel it. Her cycles come out of alignment. Sometimes the pregnancies are anomalous, like what happened to me, becoming pregnant when I wasn't partnered. And uh, after three months, experiencing what felt like a miscarriage, but not having any fetus left behind. And so not it, it isn't actually a miscarriage. It just feels like a miscarriage, but the fetus is gone. Now, when you speak to a gynecologist, usually they will say it's a blighted ovum or something along those lines. But the, but the medical aspect of this is incredibly important for us to understand that this is more than just imaginary or dreams or occurring in the astral plane. It is happening in the physical. And we have contactees that are both men and women that can attest to that uh, in regards to side effects that they feel. These side effects don't always tell you that it's a positive experience or a negative. We have side effects from both sides of those experiences. It's just important to understand that this is very real and happening in the physical plane to many people. Now, just quickly retracing why do I even talk about these things um, and how I came across this. I learned from the inside out this experience at the age of five and seven is when I received my first implantations at the age of eight I had an implantation uh, a second implantation from another um, hybridization program aboard a hybridization ship and I was able to explore the hybridization ship and see what was occurring in that hybridization ship I was also inseminated at the age of 16 when I lived in South America I had missing time in connection with this experience and also other uh, other um, medical things that occurred to me that I'm writing about in my book that are a little bit more of a sensitive nature but really speak to the genetic aspect of our DNA um, everything from malformations in the physical body to medical uh, diagnosis in our in our physical bodies all play a role in how we are participating in this hybridization program so I had many different inseminations and in extract in extractions, but they do affect the human experience. For example, I'm not able to take any kind of medication of any kind. My body doesn't handle it or is incredibly sensitive to it. Um, and this is something that I see within contactees from around the world that are also experiencing these side effects and always in the same way somehow. The hybridization ship looks something like this. This is the closest image that I was able to find of a hybridization ship that I visited, that I look like. It's it's sort of like a honeycomb. Um, and um, this is just uh, somebody's uh, picture that they put up on, on internet. But um, this is very close to what I saw. And I'm in the process of painting some of these. Um, but in these hybridization ships, first of all, they are directed by consciousness. There is no engine and it is uh, like basically it's like a like a drone or like a like a space station that is spe specifically designed for the hybridization program. And in that is a nursery. It is implant. Uh, they have an implantation area. Um, all, all of these incredible uh, birthing room um, and then genetic labs where the, these experiments are carried out. Um, now, what I was able to experience was to see who was actually managing this program. And behind that was actually uh, the first, the second time actually that I came across these draconian lineages that actually manage this particular hybridization program. And they literally have a craft that looks like this sphere. It is this mothership that is managed by this draconian consciousness. And the way that this ship functions is 
the toroidal process it, it works it's like a donut shaped actually it's hollow from the inside and the energy moves through the center outwardly and you can feel the movement of the craft um, and you can also sense the energy of these these beings which is actually very very low very deep very powerful um, and the, this is one of the programs now let's talk about presentation presentation is incredibly important part of the hybridization program because they allow us to understand that when babies are nurtured at a young age it not only does it helps their development but physiologically chemical bi biologically it allows their development and this is true with all organisms with hybrids the presentation process is important as it happened for me in 2013 the moment that I met the children, I knew immediately that they were mine, and their intelligence is far surpasses our human intelligence and development of psychic abilities, but the communication is telepathic, and they know very well everything about us. They, they see completely through you. They understand what they're doing in that hybridization program, it seems. So there is no emotions or feeling of loss. A lot of hybrid parents ask, well, uh, you know, I, I feel horrible. And in myself, when I left them, I felt a guilt and I thought, how can I continue living my life without being able to continue to take care of them? But in fact, these hybrids are so incredibly intelligent that they know what they're there to do. They know how they're carrying out these programs. Now, from my personal experience, I have been a part of four different hybridization programs, one being draconian reptilian, one being reptilian, one being Pleiadian, and the other being a cloning within the terrestrial military complex. And um, the terrestrial programs are managed uh, from what I've seen by the Biological Nuclear Warfare Department, um, which really looks at, it, which is interesting to me, but they use a cloning process to create a clone program. And it's a little different than the hybridization program and the intention of the hybridization program. The cloning is mostly to create um, DNA that is not activated as much as possible to just create artificial type intelligence or mechanical beings that are just programmable. Um, the higher vibrational uh, programs, like for example, these Pleiadian humanoid programs are designed to create advanced organisms that are then inserted in the timeline or carried out to hold space within the galactic realm. Um, so these interdimensional beings can be both high and low. Please understand there is duality to everything. And in the human hybridization, they are modifying our ancestral genetic bloodlines based on our network. And it's also cycling through our genetic biological network, which means that the design of the human race is very specific to the times that we are incarnating on the planet Earth and the information that's being edited by the awareness of each organism. Each organism that wakes up, that active, activates their DNA, changes that ancestral lineage holographically and interdimensionally. So uh, just going back here to how this is created, um, this is how we are creating the hybrids once again. Now, when I uh, came across the hybrids, I saw in 2017 that there is another wave of hybrids that are coming. And this new wave of children that are coming in the earth are one of the most advanced designs of hybrids that are coming into our human race. Now, we look at the different children, and um, it's very interesting, but the indigo children, of course, as we know, have certain traits and it looks like, to me, these children are very, they're kind of like rings in a tree. They're kind of like in archaeology, the layers of the earth. Through their awareness, through their genetic access to the code and the information of their divine blueprint, they activate aspects of themselves. And as we go through the different children, indigo, crystal, uh, going into rainbow, I mean, there's so many different waves of these children. We are also in, included in those waves, uh, hybrids that are here. We have activated certain aspects of our DNA. I believe that the next generation that's coming in to these hybrids um, that are coming are really coming to help pool our human race even further into 
the more interdimensional. Just the way our technology is becoming artificial intelligence, just the way our technology is becoming uh, holographic, we are becoming holographic. And I believe that this is what it means that we're moving into, uh, I don't like the term the new earth or the 5D. I don't believe that. I believe that we are constantly moving in and out of different dimensional planes at all times. But what will have access to those planes, especially with what's happening in the earth right now, um, is the activation of that DNA, the awareness of that. These hybrids that are being brought into the dimensional timeline hold larger strands of DNA. And oftentimes, they are not necessarily part of that incarnation cycle until they are inserted. Some of them are never inserted in the timeline. They are taken to other Earth programs, other, other worlds, worlds, other dimensions. And they don't carry, quote-unquote, dirty DNA, which means that it's not programmed with the Earth programming of this dimension and this galaxy. It is different information. Again, the core of the sun defines the kind of blood that an organism will have, the kind of DNA that an organism and how that information is stored and moves through the organism. Every single galaxy functions in a different way. It is a conscious substance. We also speak to walk-in consciousness. Some of these souls are non-physical, and sometimes they operate in this walk-in function where they come into the physical body and express in, in the middle of someone's lifespan, utilizing the same physical shell. These higher vibrational states require the knowledge of the human incarnated several times, which means that they have already have they already have the download of our genetic timeline they don't need to physically experience it is encoded in their dna so um we are this infinite consciousness the soul is this essence of information that transcends the physical what makes humans unique is that this soul is that connection to the infinite and what is being hybridized is that soul that soul essence is necessary to bind to these different organisms, organisms that I, they're not really, I don't want to use the word artificial intelligence so much, but any organism that rejects its own consciousness or that lets go of its free will becomes mechanical. And so we pull away from nature, from the natural laws of creation. And what we want to do now and what we want to do with our connections as hybrids and to our, uh, you know, our own hybrid star seeds is to begin to activate that DNA, which means become aware, not mechanical, not artificial, embody the pure consciousness of that infinite creation so that we can come into that state of that singularity where that consciousness becomes aware of itself. This is the state of creation that is the most powerful for the human. Not only does the physical body come into its most vital, productive self of creation, but it organizes its information by deprogramming trauma, fragment, fragmentation of the soul, in order to reintegrate and awaken, activate that DNA. When we reintegrate trauma, we are changing our genetic code. And so as we move through, it changes the organs, any kind of illnesses. This is why in epigenetics, we understand that we are not married to the diseases that run through our lineage. All of that is a result of cause and effect of previous ancestral incarnations. We can change that. We can heal that. Our system, the network of holographic information that runs through the body, is these vortices. Again, it's either contractive energy or expansive energy. We are a combination of white and black holes. That's what we are. The body is that. It creates this incredible cyclical uh, cycle of energy that moves through the way that the universe moves is the, the exact same way. We create these toroidal fields of energy, just like the cells. And it's those, and it's that, and it's that movement, that vibrational frequency that creates a network of communication with yourself and other organisms in this incredibly beautiful network. So whether you are vibrating at a certain vibrational frequency that connects you with your hybrids, your fragments, your inter interdimensional extraterrestrial aspects, 
all of that is available within your information. How you manage your chakra system, your perception, your emotions will define what information you're access to. And in my work, in my work with hypnotherapy, this is why some people have access to that information more easily than others. Those that meditate more, those that manage that information have the ability to access their past lives and their simultaneous aspects of themselves on other dimensional planes. How we die, how we become conscious defines our next lifetime. The way that the vibrational frequency that we have at the moment of death will define the next experience because the organism will be a match to its next experience. It literally leaves the body and the way that we consciously wake up in waking state, we can do so in dream time. It's imperative, in fact, that we do so in dream time. It's imperative that we do so in, in uh, when we're astral projecting because if we look at ourselves from above, we are one organism within another. We are these incredible spheres of knowledge and information that are interconnected to one another, just like cells, just like multiverses and uh, organisms of consciousness. Everything is designed in this fractal. As above, so below. Whatever you're experiencing internally, whatever you don't know and don't know now is what you're experiencing in the higher uh, you know, connection to all things. So this is really important. And the more we learn about our ability to activate our DNA, the more we can understand our interconnectedness to the stars, to these multidimensional realms, and choose by free will, how we embody our consciousness, how we are able to um, uh, define because everything we are imagining is being manifested on a certain dimensional plane. Just like language, the vibrational words, the syntax creates meaning to those things. And we apply meaning through that intentional vibration. So not only is the human race creating a language through the hybrids, the hybrids are a product of intentional creation in combination with many different agendas. We ourselves in our physical body are doing the same with the cells down to the molecular level. And on the human earth, we are doing the same thing. So we have to raise our vibration. In conclusion, um, we have to begin to activate this aspects of ourselves. The two main emotions in the universe are love or fear. Again, it's that contractive or expansive life force energy. We either expand and co-create or we contract. The participation and that we have in hybridization programs is always by choice on some level. There is no such thing as unconscious interaction. Um, what I mean, uh, let me rephrase that. It's not, there is unconscious interaction because when we are unconscious, we let go, we forego our free will. When we become conscious and aware, that's when we can begin to choose what programs we are participating in. And your level of awareness will define what you participate in because it's a vibrational signature that's matched to that consciousness. So this is plays an important role in that. Now you can learn a little bit more about the hybridization program. I've done several different shows and programs that explain the hybridization program. Uh, Extraordinary the Seeding is a, it's a documentary that I participated in, which really goes into uh, the hybridization pro program and some of the aspects of it. If you would like to learn more about my work, I am a certified hypnotherapist, member of the AHA, member of OPUS, which is the Organization for Research for Phenomena and Contactees, incredible. Um, and uh, one of our directors, uh, Les Velez, just recently published a book with many contactees' experiences, including my story. So please do check that out. It's a very incredible piece of work. Um, I'm also a Qigong master, a certified stress holistic management meditation instructor, pranic and quantum energy healer. And uh, I am an artist, which is funny because um, you were talking earlier about how uh, hybrids tend to have this incredible holographic ability to create and design this artwork. And I started painting out of the blue in 2017 after my uh, awareness of these things, activation and downloads of this information. 
uh, from one day to the next. So if you would like to work with me and join our support group at hybridmother.com, it's an international support group that uh, helps all contactees from around the world understand their experiences. I'm going to stop sharing now. Uh, let me just come over here. Uh, stop sharing. Okay. Um, yeah, and so... Um, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about how to uh, activate your DNA, I do provide DNA reprogramming sessions and uh, hyp hypnotherapy to help you recall and activate your DNA. So, yeah. Mm, thank you, Geraldine. That is great. I'm